In this video, we'll learn how to change the fill color and the stroke color of our objects and paths in Boxy SVG. We're going to be working a lot with the fill panel over here in the top right and also in the stroke panel to change the fill and the stroke. And you can scroll down and there's more options in each of these. We're also going to look a little bit at the depths panel where we can define our own colors and our own palettes if we're going to be using them frequently. Let's go to the fill panel first. And when we have an object selected, we can see what color it currently is. And we can left click anywhere in this color chart to pick a specific color. Notice we're just seeing shades of green right now. To change the hue, we can click up in this slider bar. Or we can left click and hold. And as we drag through here, it'll change and show us what that color is with these corresponding lightness and darkness shades. The way this chart works is there's blacks on the bottom and then going up to grays and whites in the top left hand corner and then full color saturation in the top right hand corner. We can left click and hold and mix any of these colors together. This bottom bar toggles the alpha channel which is the transparency. So even though it looks like it's changing to a lighter color purple, what it's really doing is making it more transparent and see through so it can see through to the object behind it. We'll set that back here. There's some other ways that we can change the color picker as well, or the table that we pick our color in. There's this uh, wheel that we can click on and we can search from a wheel. So the center of this is going to be white. And then we choose the hue that we want. And then when we find the hue we want, we can adjust the lightness and darkness with this bar here at the bottom. And we can also adjust the alpha here as well. And notice on both of these, it's giving us a hexadecimal value of what this color is. But if we'd like to do something different, we can change this to a red, green, blue value. And it tells us how much red, green, and blue are mixed together to make that color. And we can also do red, green, blue, alpha, and HSL. So I'm going to set this back up here to hex. And there's also one more thing we can use. And that is the like an HSL hue, saturation, and luma picker. So we choose the hue we want. And then we choose how much saturation we want to be, if we want really a lot of saturation of that color. And then this luma or this lightness and darkness of what we want that color to be. We can also use this color picker right here and we can select a color that's already in our document and it will select the values for that color. I'll go back to the first color chart now because we can also add in a gradient. So this first one we're looking at is a solid color but if we want this to be a gradient we have two different options. We can do a linear gradient or we can do a radial gradient. And what a gradient is, is it fades from one color to another. So this is a darker purple to a lighter purple. It's kind of hard to see. But if we go into the edit mode, we can adjust this gradient. So we can change where the gradient starts and stops. And if we click one end of it, we can choose the color we want it to go to to make it more of a dramatic effect. We can change to a light green here, um, gradient to a black. Or we can change this black color to something, maybe we'll do like a red to get like an extreme color difference. So this is a solid red here and like a solid green color here and then it fades in between and we can adjust how that fade works. If we want to add another stop in this linear gradient, we can just double click right here in the middle and now we have another stop. We can change this to a different color. We can do a blue and now we have green, zoom in here. We have green fading to blue, fading to red and we can have as many stops as we want to in here and change those colors around. So this is a linear gradient. If we want to do a radial gradient, we just click on radial gradient and it converts those same colors into a radial gradient. This way we can left click and move around where the center is. We can adjust where all these stops are and we can also adjust uh, the orientation of it, of this, how it appears. If we want to create it more oval shaped or if we want it to be more full. So those are those stops there. And there's some other options as well. If we go back into the linear, if we want this to be a repeating pattern, this spread lets us change that. We can just click this repeat. And then if we shrink this down, it'll keep repeating it over and over and over again within our shape. We can also use this reflect, which just sort of gives it a little bit softer edge. It's also a type of repeating with a little bit more um, fade to it. And so that's, it, you won't see that until you shrink it down. You have to keep shrinking that down to see the repeat. And then we can get in and change those colors as well. There's another way to edit these gradients, and that is using this depths panel. So we click on the gradient, and then we can use this gradient here by just clicking this plus sign 
and we can add this gradient. So we'll say add gradient from a selected field object. And now this is a gradient we can use over and over again. And we can double click on it here to edit these stops a little bit differently. So we can choose the colors in here and we can see exactly how these colors are going to look. And we can sort of customize our gradient just like this. If we want to use this gradient on another object, we can just left click and drag and drop it and it will be applied to another object as well. The nice thing about doing it this way is we can see it's applied to three different objects now and if we come in and change it in here it will also change on those different uh, objects that it's applied to. So this is a really good way, it's sort of like a palette, it's sort of using um, preset colors that we don't have to go around and change every time. And we can do this with gradients, um, we'll learn how to do it with patterns and solid colors as well. If we want to use a nice, if there's a solid color, we can select this and click this add color and go add from the fill. And now this color is part of our defined color that we're going to be using uh, throughout our project. Let's go back into the fill panel and we can change the opacity as well. So this is the opacity of the entire object. It's a little bit different than the alpha color. So the opacity is going to be changing, if I can click and drag this out. Uh, this just changes the entire, the best way to see what's happening here is to open up the elements panel and see how it's handled. So one is just providing transparency or opacity to the object. And the other one, when we're doing the alpha channel, it's actually changing it in the color value. It's adding an alpha value. So similar looking result, but again, the way it's created in the code is different. Changing the stroke of an object is very similar to changing the fill. We just come over here to the stroke panel and we can change the color. If we select the object, we can change the color of the stroke. That's the, the outside outline of the shape. We can change this to any color. We can use the same different uh, color picking methods that we could with a fill. We can change lightness and darkness. We can also make this transparent if we want to. We can even apply gradients to uh, a stroke. So we can have a gradient fading from one color to another and we just use this edit to edit in here and change what those colors are going to be. So in this case we have it from a red to a green uh, and then we have the same interface for interacting with this gradient. We can change the stroke width if we scroll down. The width is here, we can change how wide it is. And there's something to be aware of with this. We have this draw order. So right now it's drawing the fill first and then the stroke. But we can change this order around to draw the stroke first and then the fill. And then if we do this width, it's going to appear that it's only increasing the outside and not the inside. That's because what's happening is it's drawing this uh, the stroke first and then the fill on top of the stroke, and then any markers last. So changing the order of this will affect the way your stroke looks sometimes, and it also affects the order in which the path or object is drawn, um, in either in the web browser or in Boxy SVG or however it's re being rendered. I'll set the stroke to a solid color now, and we'll just make it a solid uh, black color. It doesn't really matter what hue. And we can scroll down because there's these different arrays, these different dashes we can put in here. So we can have little dotted lines and show this. We can adjust the offset and we can choose uh, how far apart they are from each other. And so there's these different arrays we can choose from. We want to create a dotted line. And these look a little bit strange because our stroke is so large. But if we select this and we turn the width of our stroke down, these can even become just dotted lines. Also, if we were to draw something, let me just draw a... Uh, couple lines here. We can change the way that these appear. If I have nothing, if I have this selected and then we change it, we can look at the line cap and the line joint. So right now it's a nice hard line right here, but we could change this to be a rounded cap um, or we can have it extend out and be a square, extend out past the fill. And we can also change the way that they, these two lines come together. We can have them be more of a, a rounded edge or we could have these be uh, like a, a square or beveled edge. This is called miter is how it is and you can actually adjust this miter as well how that behaves. Let's zoom out here and I want to talk a little bit more about this defs panel. So if we go and into our fill and we want to change some of these colors we can just go back to a solid and choose a few nice solid colors. And then if, we, if these are colors that we want to keep using consistently, or maybe I'll, I'll do this one as a pattern actually. If we select a pattern here, it just fills a pattern in, and we'll look at this more in a minute. 
But if we go to, into our DEFS panel, we see that it has the same uh, classifications. We have a color, a solid, we have gradients, we have patterns, we have markers, and we can use these different things. So we can either come up with our own and add our own color and just choose it. We can come in and edit and choose a specific color, or we can import a color from our drawing by just selecting that object and going to add color from fill, or we could add the stroke to add color from stroke because the stroke is a darker red. And then to use these, we can just drag and drop, left click and hold and drag and drop them over top of another object in here. We can go into our gradient and drag a gradient. We saw this a little bit earlier. So this is how we can use these. Um, and then it tells us how many of that color is being used in here. And if we were to change this color, it'll change all the objects that are using that color. So you can see how this can be very useful, especially if you have lots of objects drawn in the same color and you wanna change them all very quickly. You don't have to go in one by one and change the color individually. Let's look at the patterns of the fill. So if we go in here, we can choose and set this to a pattern. And the pattern has some different options, but to change these options, when we click on manage, it takes us back to that depths panel. We can edit the actual pattern by right clicking on this and going to edit pattern. And we edit it um, on its own canvas like this. We can change the color. We can change the way that it appears. This is just, it's just a drawn object uh, in uh, the editor. And so we're in here inside a pattern editing this rectangle and maybe we could add like a uh, do some little freehand stuff to this just to make to see what it looks like we go back into our main drawing now and we see that our pattern has become a bunch of our custom things that we drew here and then when we're in this pattern we can come to the edit mode and we can change around um, how much of that we can see so the shape is determining how much of the pattern we can see in there and to actually adjust the pattern, we need to go back into the fill settings and we'll see these handles appear while we're in the edit mode. So we can change the rotation of this pattern and also the density of the pattern. We can come in and see this pattern very fine or we can zoom in and see it much larger. So using the edit tool is how you adjust this just like we would do with the gradients uh, and adjusting anything else. If ever we want to get rid of a fill, we can just select that object and go to this none section and that will make the fill be nothing. So we can drag it over and it'll it's not a white fill, it's just no fill at all. We select the object and go to none and we can quickly get that back. I hope this has helped you to see different ways that you can change the fill color and the stroke color and different visual attributes of objects and paths drawn in Boxy SVG.